What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another live cast right here on the Adam Facebook page. Always a pleasure to be with you. I'm John Stamper. And today's live cast, we're going international, everybody. So I am very excited uh, to introduce Karen Galley, who is the president of Patient News slash Practice Zebra, who is coming to us from Halliburton, Ontario. How are you doing, Karen? I am doing great, John. How are you today? I'm wonderful. So cool to have an international guest on today to share some exciting news about your company. And uh, the title of the live cast today, everybody, Small Changes, Big Impact. And so we um, got a lot of information that Karen's going to share. Um, she's going to get right into her presentation and kind of right at the onset, she's also going to let you know a little bit about um, her awesome company and the great work that they're doing for office managers and practices all over uh, the dental profession. And then I will come on back at the end of her presentation. As always, any questions that you have for Karen, be sure to put them in the comments thread and we will be sure to ask. So Karen, the floor is yours. Excellent. Thanks for that introduction, John. And hopefully everyone can see my screen. That's a thumbs up from you, John. It's a thumbs up. Yep. You're perfect, good. Perfect. Perfect. So, you know, the theme of today's talk, as John mentioned, small um, changes, huge impact on practice growth and productivity. So we will be looking at seven surprising metrics uh, to gain production and boost profitability. So I've got about 20 minutes. I'm going to just launch right into it. And for starters, patient news, practice zebra, I certainly hope Many of you may know who we are. We've been exclusively dental for 27 years. We are a full service dental marketing and technology agency. So we've worked with more than 7,000 dentists. We've installed over 1,000 uh, PMS uh, integrations. We've had integrations with over 1,000 practices. And we've actually analyzed more than 50,000 distinct print and digital marketing campaigns. So that's what we know about data. Plus, a couple of years ago, back in 2017, we hired Michael Esoff. So he's our ringer chief technology officer, and he really is an expert in digital technology transformation and business strategy. So Michael really brought modern methodologies, including AI, business intelligence, to the development of Zebra. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Zebra is our proprietary cloud-based dental software system. And in Zebra, which is an amazing tool for office managers, you have key KPIs or practice intelligence, things that are truly actionable. You also have marketing intelligence, you have patient communications modules, and you also have call tracking, call scoring, and front office team training. So really a great tool and we work with lots of office managers. So note today in our presentation, all of the data is real practice data pulled directly from Zebra. So on our agenda today, seven macro trends, just taking a step back, we're right smack dab in COVID. Sometimes it's, it's good to reflect on the bigger picture. Uh, and what are those macro trends? 2020 production and the COVID gap, what are some of the trends that have been amplified by COVID and what is that common denominator? Then we'll jump into those seven surprising metrics that are truly actionable for you and your team and wrap up with getting and staying ahead of that curve. So macro trends in dentistry, what are these big trends? So first and foremost, dental spending is projected to grow to 203 billion by 2027. That's a big number and a huge uh, growth opportunity. Uh, along the same lines, the supply of full-time dentists is also going to increase steadily and that's going to um, be it combined with a lot of industry consolidation as well, the, the group practice businesses. Um, DSOs, as well as a slight slowing of the population growth. Uh, number three, there's going to be a doubling of the dental practice management software industry. You can see from half a million to a billion uh, by 2024. Sorry, half a billion to one billion by 2024. There's also going to be continued development of dental and digital technologies. And these are things like uh, your AI, your 3D lasers, dental apps, and a move from transactional dentistry to relationship dentistry. And that comes along with uh, greater public awareness of that mouth body connection. 
uh, increase patient financing options and flexibility, more in-house and third-party dental savings and membership plans, and finally, an emphasis on cross-channel promotion. So patient engagement, reviews, all of that good stuff. So th these are some big trends that are happening. So while dental spending is expected to increase, it's at a little bit slower pace than the healthcare sector in general, 34% in healthcare, 31% in dental, but still strong. We are in an amazing industry and uh, we're all very fortunate for that. Dental school grads are also trending upwards right through 2022. Beyond that, there's a lot more assumptions. It'll really be interesting to see where enrollment goes as tuitions increase and there's other uh, barriers to entry. So with more grads comes a little bit more uh, competition, increased number of dentists per 100,000. It could be exacerbated even a little bit more through COVID as there could be some fewer outflows or retiring dentists. So perhaps a little bit more increased comp uh, competitiveness in the short term. But again, this is all macro supply and demand. What's happening now? Um, that's what we're all concerned about, a production in that short to midterm. So um, there's still a lot of uncertainty and a lot of varying assumptions. Regionality certainly is going to play a factor in it, uh, but we're still dealing with that pandemic trajectory, managing those risk averse patients, uh, regionally some PPE and staffing issues, longer appointments having an impact on capacity, economic uncertainties, et cetera. There's definitely been an interruption in new patient flow through closures, and that will have a, a future forward impact. What we're seeing right now in Practice Zebra as well, a 10% um, fewer active patients scheduled compared to this time back in September of 2019. So this actually may be even a little optimistic as a marketing company our clients are very marketing focused, marketing centric, patient centric. So again, this may be a little bit better than uh, what the industry average is. So the good news though, is we're back. We survived and many will thrive and you can definitely be one of those many with your team too. Um, you probably are already if you're here today watching because dentistry truly is resilient. And here's a little bit more information, kind of exemplifying that resilience. Healthcare is actually going to recover a lot faster than many other industries. So compared to things like arts, entertainment, food services, accommodation, they're looking at a really protracted recovery as late as 2024, 2025. Healthcare, on the other hand, including dentistry, is going to be a lot faster recovery. So for sure, there's going to be some more pain in the short term and for some practices more than others, but you can be ahead of the curve. And that starts with a mindset of positivity. And again, that's why you're here today. So 2020, the first half of 2020. So from January to about mid-March, things looked like this, beautiful, put together. And this is what happened in April. And I got in trouble uh, when I was presenting last week for saying the ass and unraveled. So I won't repeat that, but something like that occurred in the second half of this calendar year. The good news is, and this is looking at 12 months of trailing production. So we're going back a full year, September of uh, 2019 through to today. And you'll see there's two uh, smaller um, production gaps that occurred earlier in the year. The first gap uh, relates directly to November 24th and that Thanksgiving week. The second gap is the Christmas New Year's period. And then you see that big, you know, COVID, let's call it chasm. Uh, and this really was from about uh, March 15th through to June 7th. So again, the very good news is you can see production skyrocketing beyond that, up, back up to 100%. Uh, and these are all practices that we have connected to uh, Zebra and pulling the data directly from their practice management software. So um, that is the great news that that's where we're sitting. And by comparison, you can see the ADA average, which is sitting around 70, 75% indicated by that yellow trend line. So in general, as an industry, we're doing very well in terms of our current rate of recovery. So 
we talked about those big macro trends. Some of those trends have actually been amplified through COVID. Um, and I've highlighted three here uh, in particular because they're within our scope and they're also within your control. Um, and largely as office manager and with your teams, uh, you, can, you can impact these trends. You can take advantage of some of these opportunities presented and we'll go into these a little bit further. And from these, we'll pull our seven surprising metrics. So amplified trend number one, that um, move from transactional dentistry to relationship dentistry. So this was a thing pre-COVID and it's even more of a thing now. Why is that? Obviously, we have a really renewed and laser focus on health and wellness. And, um, you know, along with uh, that comes the increased awareness of the mouth body connection. And I like to express this by saying you can't fight COVID if you're fighting gum disease and any associated illnesses. So people are really getting that message, um, which is fantastic. Also, we're living in an age of misinformation. It's really getting harder to figure out what's real. And this is leading to some increased consumer skepticism. So generally speaking, dental patients more than ever are in need of reassurance, communication, especially those risk averse patients. How are you keeping them safe? Um, do they know that the dental office is in fact one of the safest places they can be right now? They need accurate information and they want a stronger bond. They want a better relationship with all of their service providers. So what does a good relationship look like? It really doesn't matter if it's office manager, team, doctor, office manager, husband, wife, husband, husband, friend, friend. According to Psychology Today, it's really all the same. It's built on trust, honesty, communication, transparency, respect, and very thankfully, humor. I love this photo because it represents a great relationship. It's kind of funny, and this is uh, probably an easier relationship to manage than some of the others we manage in our lives. So amplified trend number two, in-house membership plans. So pre-COVID dental membership plans or dental savings plans were really taking off. Um, both in-house and third-party provider. Many dentists looking for more control and to move away from that insurance-based model. But why has that been amplified through COVID? And there's some obvious uh, answers here, the economic uncertainty. There's been reduced employer benefits with um, employers struggling uh, through COVID and looking for cost reduction uh, strategies increased rates of unemployment, additional reduction in insurance reimbursements. And that was predicted, but I believe there's been um, some announcements along those lines just very recently. Uh, and also an increased awareness of the higher value of dental membership plan patients. So the cost of dental treatment, as you know, is an often cited uh, patient objection. Um, or rather this could be um, a perceived cost value, a lack of perceived cost value. So Malcolm Gladwell would say um, that you need to find that tipping point with the new patients, the new patient onboarding, um, existing, uh, existing patient case acceptance, and that could very well be your dental membership plan. So the third and final amplified trend, cross-channel marketing. And why is this more of a thing? So simply put, it is a more complex patient journey, and especially in the current um, scenario, patients require a lot more touch points to build that trust and to manage that relationship moving forward. Beyond this, there's a lot better um, channel attribution and ROI analysis available now. Things like address matching, phone number matching, the PMS integration that ties your marketing campaigns directly to this patient spend. Um, and, and I also have to talk about mail, which is um, the next bullet point here. And the reason I'm talking about mail is because we are a marketing and technology company and we're full suite, full service. But transactional mail is in secular decline. We're not getting our bills anymore in the mail. But what we are getting is information, quality information and promotion. Um, and, uh, and also new patients uh, finally rely on reviews, especially the most recent ones. So for quite some time, uh, traditional media really reigned supreme. And this was before that digital revolution when it came to marketing. So earlier businesses, you know, 
jumped on the digital bandwagon and individual channels and they really put all their energies and resources sometimes into a single channel and invariably they were a bit disillusioned or um, upset or concerned with the results that's no longer the case you know cross-channel marketing is really where it's at so with all of these um, amplified trends what is the common denominator and the common denominator really is the patient the modern patient journey and that experience. And as an office manager, as a, as a business, you have an opportunity at every touch point along that patient journey to strengthen the relationship that you have with those patients and to boost production. You have an opportunity to promote and boost production. And it starts with practice awareness, how you're known to those patients in the community, patient research and how, how they find you and perceive you online the all important buying decision, the effectiveness of your first impression um, that largely happens uh, with your front office team, the patient lifetime experience and how that can be optimized. And then finally, the patient advocacy and how it can be leveraged. So you can see that central to this patient journey right there in the core is good data for information. So, so far we looked at those macro trends. We looked at the current state we looked at the impact of COVID on practice production and then amplified trends. We found that common denominator, the patient experience. So how can you and your dental team use this information to make really good business decisions and outperform because your practice can be ahead of the curve and many of ours are. So the answer really is, actionable insights. So now we're going to look at seven metrics, some you may be familiar with, but definitely with a fresh perspective. And I'm not going to go through this chart in its entirety at all, because we'll be touching on these, but down the left hand side are some metrics you're more familiar with that you likely are using all the time, the new patient flow, the average patient value, who your high value patients are, et cetera, et cetera. On the right hand side, you know, there's some things that are a little bit more insightful, a little less intuitive, but definitely actionable. So let's go through a couple of these now. So number one, your new patients versus your net new patients. So we have practice A and practice B. They both have a super healthy flow of new patients. So practice A has 848 new patients, practice B 722. The difference is in the patients that they've lost that have dropped off their schedule. And you can see practice A lost more than they gained for ultimately a net patient loss of 173. And practice B lost fewer patients resulting in a net gain of 468. So on the surface, these two practices look like they're trending positively in, two, in terms of their new patient flow. But come January 1st, 2021, unfortunately, practice A is not well positioned um, moving into next calendar year versus practice B, which is really poised for growth. So the first form of prevention is always awareness. If you and your team are regularly visiting and reviewing this data, it becomes part of your collective consciousness and then it becomes actionable. Um, so this is what some of our prospects and, and clients look like when they first see this metric and, and we've got a challenge with that. The good news is every problem has a solution. And again, these, these items are super actionable. So next metric, average patient value versus new patient value. And here are four practices, A, B, C, D. In yellow, you can see the average annual patient value. So ranging here with practice A from 800 um, down to practice D with 1355 annual average. On the right-hand column, the arrows in red, you'll see the new patient first year value. And invariably, it's at least double across the board. This is indicative of you know, almost every practice that, that we work with. So key here is that when you're quantifying that COVID production gap, what happened? If you had a considerable loss of new patient flow through those COVID closures, and, and you likely did at that time, um, you're, you're 
are really going to have some production um, challenges potentially moving into 2021, some downward pressure on production, unless there's some considerable uh, mitigation. And the value of this loss is oftentimes a bit surprising. Again, there's lots you can do today. So sharing this metric with your team so they better understand the value of new patients, that'll help a lot and they'll help you. Um, lots of our clients have also expanded hours of operation. They've kept um, dedicated new patient appointment times, even days, introduced more enticing referral programs, maintained or even increased their marketing spend. And we're gonna to touch on call handling in a moment, which is one way to increase new patient flow without spending another penny on marketing. The key is when your team understands the metrics and they, they really get it, maybe they're even incentivized. When they get a new patient now, they're gonna coddle them, definitely coddle those new patients. So metric number three, surprising metric number three, you may know who your high value patients are. You may be able to pull a list like this and you can see the patient spend, um, et cetera, et cetera. But what can you really do with this information other than perhaps um, segment your servicing model and have a little bit more um, white glove treatment for high value patients? But the difference, the, the real kicker is when you know where they are. Once you know where those high value patients are, you can better target your marketing. You can look for like audiences and tailor your message to be really relevant to that audience. You know, you want more patients like your best patients. And if you know where they are, you can do a lot better job at target marketing on social, direct mail, Google. Combine this with some deep demographics and you can really develop content that's truly relevant to that audience, the female head of household and have a stronger ROI. So when you find the right patients, you have a 100% chance of winning and hopefully that's your forecast for today. Number four, metric number four, in-house membership plan use versus what that growth opportunity looks like. So um, you may understand, you may know the production of your membership plan patients, but what about the growth potential that's still existing within your non-insured uh, patient list? And for some practices, dental membership plan patients drive 2X, 3X, even 4X the value of non and underinsured patients. And what we've also found is the simpler the plan, the higher rate of adoption and return. So here's a practice you can see um, with an average patient yearly value of 1275. Look at their dental membership plan patient value at 2635. And they're still sitting with around 300 patients that are uninsured. So we did the math for this practice. If they were to convert 20% more uninsured patients to plan, they boost production by 78,000. It's a big, a big number without a tremendous amount of effort. Um, so if you have a dental membership plan, it's a great idea right now to promote it across all of your channels, maybe even using an automated communication cadence to send messages to those uninsured patients at regular intervals, but definitely pre-appointment. Uh, Zebra has this functionality along with a lot of other um, patient communication modules. So number five of seven, current call conversion versus a 10% increase. So this is huge. Um, these charts are a little tough to read, so I'm going to just walk you through it quickly, talk you through it quickly. This is what we call the call conversion what if calculator straight from Practice Zebra. Again, this is actual data from PMS and call tracking. This is a big practice with production of about 2.7 million. So the chart at the top is what's happening now. And the chart below is what if at a 10% improvement. So the yellow arrow indicates their current live call answer rate. And the red arrow is their current call conversion rate. So this practice is uh, a little bit below industry average call answer rate at 55%. And you can see the industry average right beside it, but just above the industry average conversion rate. And you can see that as well, 64%. So the key is what happens when they increase these metrics by just 10% down below. And you can see where that red arrow is in the bottom chart. They've increased their call answer rate from 55 to 65 and their call conversion from 64 point to 74. 
look at the increased production, 800,000 in increased production based on this practice's own new patient first year value. Again, these aren't averages. This isn't information that we're um, pulling from any other data source. It's right from their practice management system. So answering a few more calls, a little bit more training with the front desk team. And this is the type of result you can get without spending another penny on marketing. It's extremely um, valuable. So when your team is privy to this data and they understand the goals and maybe they're even incentivized, this is how they're going to feel when they convert another new patient call. They're going to be excited. So metric number six, percentage of patients scheduled versus top performing offices. So here again, you have practice A and you have practice B. Practice A with 1,202 active patients and an average patient yearly value of 642. So that's very near the ADA average. Practice B, a larger patient base at 36.69 and an average rate of $703. But look at their scheduled percentage. Practice A has 22% of their active patients scheduled for a visit. Practice B has 89% of their patient scheduled. And again, real data, this proves that it is possible. Practice B worked with us through COVID to really message uh, patients with um, that reassurance that they needed. What are they doing in terms of, of their protocols, sanitization? What, you know, the, the importance of the mouth body connection, especially during um, this time of uh, high infection rate. So, the top 10% of performing practices are currently scheduled at 70%. So practice A has some work to do, but never fail. There's always tools that you can use to really impact very quickly. Um, so, you know, look to some supports and, and you can really make an impact there. So this is how some of our clients feel when they beat that top 10%. Woohoo! It's not quite Friday yet. We're a day away, but uh, getting there. And finally, metric seven of seven, active patients versus danger patients. What the heck is a danger patient? A danger patient has not been in for nine months. They're potentially at risk of leaving or attriting. So here we have two practices, A and B. Practice A has 26% of their patients that are in danger. That's actually around the average uh, of 27%. But look at practice B, they're in double danger at 54%. That shows that half of their patients aren't currently connected with the practice. Um, so, you know, this is a challenge, but again, every challenge has a solution. You can isolate those danger patients. You can click to see your danger patients and you can message them and, and get them reactivating in the practice with lots of great tools. So here's a practice that's kicking it out of the ballpark, hitting, I should say, <laughs> hitting out of the ballpark at 12% danger patient. Are we playing soccer or baseball? So when you lower that danger threshold and you catch those patients before you, they fall off, this is how you and your team feel when they understand the metrics. So how much added production is just sitting in these metrics, even without spending any money on marketing? This is what we were talking about earlier, small change, big impact. If you could improve by just 10%, and there's lots of other areas you can consider too. Case acceptance is another huge one, and we haven't even factored it in here. But this is taking the average size practice with a 10% improvement in these various uh, areas, and it leads to 300,000 in additional uh, production. So big, big deal. And just in wrapping up, how do you get and stay ahead of that curve? Well, we talked about the fact that right now, patients do need to know what you're doing to keep them safe and how they can maintain a healthy mouth. They need to hear from you a lot. So I'd say focus on that patient communication plan. Really engage your team for support. Our top production practices share their data and metrics. They set realistic goals for improvement and look at those key metrics regularly, quantify those opportunities. Think about these what if scenarios and find where in your practice a small change can have the biggest impact on practice production. And finally, be positive. 
we're here now and we've done amazing things, you know, from being completely closed to regaining production at close to 100%, hopefully for many of you. And uh, while there's some more pain and some more uh, hurdles to surmount, we can all get there and we will in 2021 because COVID will die. <laughs> I certainly hope that that's the case. Um, think good things are going to happen in 2021. That is for sure. So in wrap up, that's, you know, small changes, big impacts, seven trends, seven metrics for practice success. And I would like to throw out there that any uh, members of ADOM, dental office manager, you can have a free metrics review with Practice Zebra and, and someone on my team. Email me at kgalley at patientnews.com. You can also text, text me here, promo code ADOM. And um, we've got some lovely swag. Since we're a marketing company, I have to share. There's beautiful uh, bag, shopping bags. I even have my COVID um, Zebra approved <laughs> mask wear. So thank you so much for having me today and for your time. And if we have a minute, um, John, if you can hear me, are we jumping back with you or is our time at the uh, max capacity now? Yeah, we'll jump. Uh, that was awesome. Right. I can tell you <laughs> that um, at the moment, uh, no questions, but a couple of comments such as, yes, awesome, amazing. Uh, and so much information there. I'm going to make the recommendation um, that this is one of those live casts, I would imagine that people are going to go back and they're going to do that little thing where when you watch a YouTube video, right, you kind of move a little bit, you take some notes or whatever. There was a lot of great stuff there. So, uh, you know, first off, want to thank you for that. I think the resource will be awesome. I think the uh, office managers will certainly appreciate that. And yeah, glad that you shared your information. Um, I know that the ADOM team went ahead also and just put right in the comment section, um, the link that can take them right to that free metrics review uh, for people to get started. And again, I'm going to make that final recommendation and share this out with a lot of your other colleagues. So much great information that um, that Karen shared and really appreciate this um, with what I think has been our first international live cast in 2020. So, uh, well, I have to say, John, that 90% of our clients are US based. Yes. And uh, I've also got a place in Manhattan. You know, I haven't been there as much very <laughs> recently with, uh, you know, what's, what's happening there, but things are improving, thank goodness. And um, I'm just super thrilled to be here with ADOM today. And in particular, we work with a lot of office managers, obviously, who are in and out of Zebra and looking at metrics with our team and from a consulting uh, capacity. And of course, on the marketing side and executing on uh, patient communications and different things. So we love our office managers and I really admire them. I mean, the stress and pressure that the office managers have been under, never mind the dentist owner and everything else they've got so many stakeholders you know they're managing through a doctor office manager relationship the patient uh, relationship and communications, their team and getting the best production and performance. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure points there. And uh, anyway, kudos to all of the office managers, because they are fabulous. And it must be also a very rewarding career too. So um, yeah, happy to be a part of this today. And, uh, and I appreciate uh, also that ADOM let me switch things up with the presentation because this was new information um, that really came to light. And I wanted to add that value and share that back with, uh, with the ADOM membership. So thank you so much for that to Trish and everyone that I've been dealing with, Isabel and yourself, John, at uh, ADOM. Yeah, it was awesome. And again, I think, like I said, um, lots of, of nuggets in there. And that's typically you know, what's been great, you know, about the ADOM Nation is they really, really appreciate, they, they dig into the business aspect of any of this. And I think like one of the great things that you shared today certainly was, um, you know, not just high level marketing ideas and so on and so forth and tips, which were there, but real life examples of how that can make a difference. So uh, Karen, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, as I've been sharing everybody that we do these live casts with, that we see you at a, at a meeting soon in person and we can uh, get back to people networking and so on and so forth. So thanks again for your time and uh, best of luck. Thank you so much, John. And Great thanks everyone. You.